Good morning, everyone. I'm, ju I'm just going to start. I know there are people still coming through the door, but um, today, as I'm trying to hopefully get you to participate, I want to try and make the most of the time that we have got. Um, my background, I am, my name is Jill Pearson. Um, I've worked internationally for maybe 15, 16 years. It's so long I can act cannot actually remember. And I'm currently working as the head of mathematics at Repton School. One of the um, things that I am really passionate about is to try and get students actively involved in learning and not being passive learners. And I think many of us have been brought up in a system where we sat passively and we were very obedient students and we did everything that we were told to do. Um, my view is that unless a student is actively involved in their lesson, then the really the true depth of understanding will not uh, necessarily get to the higher levels that we would hope all our students could attain. Today, I'm going to focus at trying to get the students active within a classroom environment. I've done lots of work with students on bigger scales, sometimes looking at three or four hundred students at a time. Um, in hall environments where they're all doing activities. Some of you may be familiar with the Dragon Maths type activities or the CMAC, which is Southeast Asia Maths competition because I used to work in Hong Kong. And on a big scale, those things are already set up. But often inside the classroom, we can regress and we sometimes avoid these opportunities where the classroom is lively and it's noisy and it's and in some respects actually out of control. I love out of control <coughs> because when it's out of control then that means the students are in control and not me. And I'm hoping that today by the end of it you'll be happy to have your students more out of control and leaving them in charge of their learning. Now the very first activity that I want to look at with you today, which is not necessarily active, but certainly it gets the whole class participating. I'm hoping this is going to work. Um, underneath your seats, you will see two sheets. The one I'd like you to use at the beginning is the green sheet. So the smaller green sheet. And the first activity, I have to keep walking fast. Would you like to sit there and just press that little button every time I say to you? Press it one more time. Is actually the bingo, the green sheet. And if you've not got one, there are just two spare at the front. So please come up if you want an extra one. These are called the bingo cards. One more time. And each game that you use will give you 40 bingo cards and I've actually done 84 today so we may have some people winning at the same time that's not a problem um, if you actually look at it we have four sets of bingo cards and also uh, you can choose from those four different sets but there's really no difference in ability now I must say in terms of my feedback I would love them to be of a different ability so that you could differentiate the cards depending on the group but that's something in terms of the website's uh, development and we would feed back it's been a, a website that we just happened upon by chance in our department and we have used it extensively and the students have responded superbly to it if we oops too soon just back one if we actually look today what, what I would try to do is maybe show you and represent how it works. And I'm not very well planned at this stage because I was supposed to have um, the actual website up. But if you could get onto the internet for me, would you be able to type in that web address? It's called mathsbox.org.uk. Let's hopefully it will come up. Now, that's me straight into the website, but I'm not exactly sure how to bring it up. I need someone with some technical prowess to do that. But what you're going to do is you will see a website and there are a number of different questions that will actually come up and you can flick through those questions. And I'm just going to see, we'll wait for a moment to see if we can get off the PowerPoint and show that to you. We just have to go away from the PowerPoint and then just... Yeah, so if we go into here, into the internet, so just down here is it coming up yep. yes okay so the one we've focused on today is actually one to do with indices one of the things you will do is you'll just go to number and then you'll come down and you'll see all the different aspects that you can look at 
the one we're looking at at the minute, I think is it a simplifying of thirds? It says in the top right hand corner. So if we click on that, we've got a number of different activities. We've got the bingo that I'm looking at first of all, but I'm going to come on to the treasure hunt activity. I'll also come on to the settler. If I actually just click on bingo A, I will show you an example of what they see. So well, of course, before that, or maybe just as an introduction to it, I would maybe just start with that in the class with no introduction at all and let's see how the students use it. If we find that there's something they've forgotten, we'll deviate and we'll look at some examples together as a class and then go back into the bingo game. Now, I'm not sure if anybody could simplify that. I'm hoping that we have the mathematic ability to do that. But what you would do is you would try and simplify that and then look on your bingo card to see if you've actually got the answer. Now, I would say at this point, has anybody actually got the answer of the root of 12? Two root three, fantastic. So what you would do is the class say, right, you can score that one off. Now, it depends on the class. If it's a low class, what we would say is you're looking to see if you can get a row or a vertical column or even diagonally with four in a row. What we have done with some of our brighter classes is we've made them keep going and using it as a speed activity. Uh, then you say you have to get full house. And at the end of that, it's up to the students. It depends what your class is like. We expect the children to get up and probably do a little dance to say that they've won bingo. They actually get really excited. And sometimes the prize is dependent on what I've got, maybe a sweet or a chocolate or something like that to say, well done, you've actually won the bingo. But mostly that should be about a five, ten minute starter. Any longer than that, and it's ineffective, okay, because it sometimes goes on too long. Sometimes from it, we might decide that there are issues that we need to address. So we might focus on that as a starter, and that might deviate the lesson into actually specifically looking and reviewing the simplifying of thirds. But that's entirely up to you and what you would do in the lesson. But that's just the starting activity, and I'm really only using the website to give you a glimpse because we don't really have time to do it all because the next activity I want you to participate in. And I was going to stop there because I'd rather, with each activity, just get you to ask me any questions rather than leaving them all to the end. So in that regard, do you have any specific questions about how that would be delivered? Or does it seem quite self-explanatory? Okay. No problem at all, thank you so much. Now the second activity is the one that I need you to be prepared to do something about. I'm looking at the rows and I would like each row to work together. Now it's going to be quite disruptive but here we go. You have a yellow sheet. It's not the yellow sheet I want you to work on, I just want you to put both sheets, yellow and green, under your desk. Okay. I'm hoping that you will have something to write on from today. We'll come back to the yellow sheet later. You'll see around the room on both sides some laminated sheets. This activity is what we refer to as a treasure hunt. And what I was hoping you could do today, are in your respective rows, whether they be four or five in each, is to together see if you can go around the room and to try and find out what the order is in terms of how these can be solved. If I look at this one, for example, I've got a question here. I have an answer up there, but they do not match. So therefore, two to the power of two to the power of four is two to the power of eight. So therefore, the answer is? 156. I can't even do that. I'm doing two to the power of six to 64, 128, 256. Awesome, great mental, I'm not very good. So I'm looking around the room to try and find the answer to this one, but I'm not sure if anybody can see it. We can't actually see that number but what we might need to look for is actually over here, 2 to the power of 8. So you're either looking at it in terms of a power or possibly a number. If I look, and I'll run back, this is number 9. Number 9 card is actually followed by 
<laughs> Sorry. Uh, number 14. Now, what I would like you to do is within the next five to ten minutes is to try in your teams to see who's the first one that can find the complete loop. So therefore, we go from nine, we go to 14. What comes next? And you have to come right the way back to nine. I'm setting the timer. You have 10 minutes. Go. to you. So the idea is to try and find what the loops are by going around. So 9 to 14 by looking at the answers and then the questions. And each card has a number. So on your number, you have to find what's the next card number. And I'm trying to get them to work in teams. You can. You can start whichever card you like. You don't have to start with nine. You can start anywhere you like. I do have an answer sheet. Like a pattern or something? Just the answers. Basically, I'll not show it to you, yeah, okay. but you should see. Hey, look. I will let them. Promise. I'll time it if we. Hopefully. What, dear? Oh, no, not on this sheet. Just on your oh, yeah. page. Oh, just on your page. We never use this now. You're not yet. Later. Yes, dear. No, my name is Jill, J I L L. You're representing the session, yes. right? Yes, I am. Jill. Jill. Yes, is that okay? J I L L. No. That's okay. I mean, it, uh, it's interesting. I'll get the place to feedback is what would be the best way to do it in the classroom. Yeah. And it's quite interesting. You can watch the students, how they work as a team, yeah. and how they actually decide to manage it, which is quite good if you want them to look at their independent learning skills and teamwork skills. Yeah, then you can I've comment normally on got that. pairs myself. Yeah. Have you used this before? Yeah. Brilliant. Um, I love that. Where did you find it? It was just one of our teachers that actually just discovered it. Well, not this website. This is brand new to me, which was what I was going for the question for. Oh, right. Is it a paid website? Or? Yeah, it's free. It's completely free. Now, that's why I thought I must show this to people today, because I'm, I'm, we're wondering when will they actually put a subscription on it. Yeah. So that's the one yeah. thing. So I think eventually, because this is just a tip of the iceberg, um, I can't show everything, but there's a little thing at the end that I'll show on the PowerPoint about the math slips which um, is a wonderful way of getting students to do individual progress. So therefore, they have to do this type of activity. Yeah. Okay, oh yes, what we're doing is, I've just got the group to do an activity where, if you look at each card, you've got the top part, which gives you the answer. The middle part is the question, but they're not matching. Then you have to go away and then find out which card... Yes. And I'm just getting the group to actually look at it and to see what sort of pitfalls you might find in a lesson and then we'll discuss sort of things to look out for when the students are doing it. So by that time they will learn it? Hopefully. That is the idea. Okay. Okay. Don't worry. What we were doing, we've just gone through a little, um, I'll show it to you at the end, I'll go through the bingo. But this exercise is what we call like a treasure hunt, trying to help the students by obviously doing the practicing their mathematics to actually in the end find the hunt okay that means two to the power of two to the power of four number nine is actually two hello are you okay not yet that's for later that's the final bit this is not this one okay, do I get this? oh wow come here i think oh, i haven't brought any prizes today you may have my muffin <laughs> the muffin can be your prize i actually thought about getting some treats but anyway 20, 19, 10, Excellent 11. ladies, what a great team you were. <laughs> Have you ever done anything like this before? Be well done, would you like to check? <laughs> of course. Have everything together. Absolutely. So oh, you would have, right. like, if it's bingo, you would have even the bingo card. Oh yes. No, I will and talk about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything is done for you. Lovely. Does it fit to primary? Yeah, you can do it with anything.
15. Well, we've got 6 to 20, and then you've got 11 to 1, and then... 5 to 13, 10 to 3, yeah, uh, 9 to... 8, 17, maybe that's carried on from the stake yeah, there, yeah, 19, 19 to 10, 10 yes, yeah. 16, 16 to 12. To 12. Now the concept into yeah, is to try and put them all together, so you go 12 to 15 and then 15 to 9. So that 6 to 20, 6 to 20, 20 to 19, 19 to 10, 10 to 3. And so three to eleven. Oh, that's that well great. done. Yeah. Oh, but let's see. But so three should go to. Okay. Oh, sorry. Thirteen. I think you meant to say thirteen. Thirteen to eighteen to sixteen to twelve. Fifteen, nine, fourteen, four. You can tell we're all math teachers. <laughs> Slightly nerdy as well. <laughs> I'm not sure we get bottom set working quite this hard. I'll just. Morning. I know some people are still working, that's wonderful. That means that you actually want it to get to the end of the activity. Um, of course, um, you can put the answers up for the students to self-check, or as you can see, those who came to me, it's very quick. It's very easy to immediately assess how the students have done in that activity. I can see from the room that there are some people that have actually used that type of activity before, so you'll be familiar with the treasure hunt. Um, I think what I'm trying to say to you today is that the website that actually contains all of this stuff, which is www. I'll put it back up on the screen, mathsbox.org.uk, is actually free. And it has a wealth of information there on all of the disciplines in terms of mathematics. Now, it's still not complete. I, I selected this topic because within the website, let me just go back to have a little demonstration. Whoops, wrong one. You can see that it has all the bingo cards for this one. It does have the treasure hunt, and I'll come on to the settler in a minute. There are some um, activities or topics that not everything is available yet and it'll just say coming soon so it can be a bit frustrating if you're doing something oh it's not quite there yet it's completely free but of course we're wondering when will they ask for a subscription and uh, I am sure when they have actually completed everything that might come in the future but I say get in now and get using the resources what we um, are intending to do we've done some of it is actually downloading and saving hard copies and uh, in terms of the bingo cards it is very easy to actually take them, colour them, laminate them and use them over and over again. Similarly for the treasure hunt, it's a resource that you can keep and obviously integrate into your schemes of work and then people, teachers etc they can use it whenever it's suitable. <coughs> now I'm not sure what time I've got left uh, Obviously, in a class, you're very obedient because clearly we're adults and it can actually get quite um, disruptive. And one of the things that we do tend to do is for those students, say, who've actually finished first, we have what we call the settler activity, which is also part of this um, website. And you'll see here the settler is just on the top right. I've deviated from my um, PowerPoint and I will go back to it. But the settler is basically a wonderful way, <coughs> sorry, I'll let you click through, a wonderful way to get the students just to calm down again, okay, to come back to doing some individual learning task. I mean, obviously it's all focused on the laws of indices today. You do not have to do a lesson completely on <coughs> laws of indices. You could have three different topics going in the one lesson if you so see fit. But this one, sometimes when I first looked at it, I really didn't have a clue what to do with it. The idea is that you can see on the right hand side, you can see there are four rows of five. There are 20 questions. 
whereas on the left hand box there are 25. Now what you've got to do is to actually simplify all of the 20, then take them out of the box and then you'll be left with 5. Those 5 are put in here and the total of them will always come to 5 root 2. So no matter what sheet your students have, the answer here is always the same, which is great for you, but all the students are doing different questions, but at least when they ask you, have I got it right, you can immediately say, mm, there must be a mistake somewhere in your work. And that's what we use to bring the class back together and to get the students working on their own on a task that consolidates what the lesson was actually hoping they would achieve. And then hopefully at the end of the lesson the students can demonstrate through the settler if they have understood what your objective was or are there any you know, remaining conflicts with their understanding. Okay. Now those were the three main activities I just wanted to present to you today and what I'm looking at, whoops back one idea. <laughs> I think you will be able to get a copy of the slides, okay, but if we go back one please, and another one, um, that's the website if you want it to take it down immediately, maths box, make sure you've got the S, uh, .org .uk, um, and save it and just explore it. I'll keep going through the presentation and I'll come just to the end slide, just keep press, press, press. <coughs> Keep pressing, just keep going, keep going, keep going. Obviously keep going, that's great. And again, yeah, keep going. This one was just showing the treasure hunt. Keep going, keep going, keep going. That was the settler and stop. When I actually got my um, numeracy coordinator to check the PowerPoint, I said, well, what do you think? Is there anything else I could add? And he said, yes, you must tell them about the maths loops. And I think some people can find these even when you're just Googling for, you know, different tasks, etc. But this one, he was saying he particularly likes it. And we've been using it with our exam students to get them to actually focus on their own self-assessment and their own progress. And basically, it controls the pace of their learning, but it's continually self-assessing. Now that, if you go into the main website page, is in the bottom left hand corner. When you open it, sometimes the window is too small and you don't see the full picture, it's in the bottom left hand corner, but you can explore that for yourself. Okay, now one thing I did want to ask when you were all doing the treasure hunt, what sort of implications do you think would arise within a classroom setting for that activity? from your experience of actually doing it. Hurdles that you think you might come across that you would have to try and manage. Coordination of the team. Okay, <coughs> what we have found, that's fantastic, thank you. In our classes, one of the things we actually want and we um, report on the students is their ability to work as a team. Uh, their ability to think tactically and to be able to do a task efficiently and often you've got students who will work superbly together as a team and you have other teams that simply do not understand how to think about the best way to actually focus on the activity and get get to the end of the activity first. And so in that regard, I think those are the all, there are many other things that you're assessing, not just the maths, you're assessing how do they work together, how do they collaborate, how do they communicate, how do they verbally talk about their mathematics, and how can they transport that to coming to an end point together for success. And that's all I wanted to say today. That's over to you if you have any questions. But thank you for participating and thank you for bothering to get up because I think some people thought I was mad, but I thought, no, they've got to get up, they've got to do it because we have to experience it because that's the best way to learn. Okay, <coughs> Go for it to the floor. Or maybe it's one of those lessons where everybody understands and I'm very happy. Yes. Yeah. These sort of activities, do you tend to, obviously, you've got to teach them the basic skills of what yes. I'm going to do the Yes. So would you tend to be using this as a plenary to be checking, or do you tend to use it as a starter? 
That's a great question. What I have been doing, because my timetable focuses on exam classes, and you know when you're maybe getting the students prepared for the exams, the mock exams, we've got this typical type of question, which is more of the fundamentals, you know, your sort of C, D, B type questions. I try and do them as starters like a revision sort of to bring back into their memory those skills. So I've been using them for my older kids as starters. I think if you were looking at your younger students and introducing it first through activity, then you could use it as a plenary. So it really completely depends on the class and what you're hoping to achieve with them. But it's true, it depends. Sometimes I even use them as a plenary just, you know, just to say, let's get a bit busy. And the students come in and go, please, miss, can we do bingo today? You know, they absolutely love it, but I'm not sure whether they like the bingo or they like the fact that they could get a sweet. So uh, anything to sort of encourage them to learn and to enjoy their learning. But yes, it depends on the group. <coughs> it really does. Anything else? I'm just trying to... I think that's it. Oh, yes. You said just... Uh the total of these five numbers will be always five root two. Yes. Whatever the numbers will be here. What's the logic behind it? Like, uh, are the numbers arranged in such a way that for this uh, group of numbers, the total will be that? Yes, let me just uh, go through yeah. that again. Yeah. In this particular um, problem here, every time you go to the website, if you click on the set alert, they will show you the number on the box and the number on the box is the answer. Now the reason they keep all of these the same is so that the teacher can very easily okay. assess rather than you having to check, you know how much time you could spend mm -hmm. checking to see if they're right and that takes away that particular problem in the classroom. Okay. okay. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. If you just want to come and talk to me at the end, that's fine. I'm not sure how long the session was to run for. 11.30. Well, then we've got plenty of time for, you know, the chairs to be put back and everything put neat. But just come and talk to me at the end if you want to or talk with each other. Thank you so much. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you.